dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYNT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. Governor Andy Bashir is holding a news conference on COVID-19 right now. If you want to watch that, we have it on the WYMT Facebook page or our second channel, H&I. But first at four, the WYMT Food City Mountain Basketball Classic kicks off tonight. But the show actually began earlier today as more than 100 students received recognition at the annual scholarship awards ceremony. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more from the Mountain Arts Center in Prestonsburg. 108 scholarships were awarded today at the Mountain Arts Center, marking the 35th year of the Mountain Classic Scholarship Awards and shining a light on students from all across the region. With the banquet to give students and their families a chance to mingle and an awards show to put their academic achievements center stage, the annual awards were back in person this year. Organizers and committee members say it was a blessing to see the smiling faces of students as they received their scholarships confident it will make an impact on each one. It has just been a pleasure for me to see these young people and to see the parents come out with them today and realize that hey, their kid has worked hard. They deserve this. The program has awarded more than 2,200 scholarships since its creation, giving back to thousands of kids across the region. In Prestonsburg, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. Our own Brandon Robinson was the guest speaker today. The students say it was a great way to celebrate their scholarships and we'll hear from some of them about how the money contributes to their future plans coming up tonight at 6. Sad news in the horse racing world today. Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit has died. The Derby winner, known for a drug testing controversy after his big win earlier this year, reportedly died from a heart attack after a workout at Santa Anita Park in California. This comes days after tests were able to prove that the drug found in his system was found from a skin ointment rather than an injection. Well, this week marks Winter Weather Awareness Week. It encourages folks to think ahead and make the necessary preparations to stay safe during the winter months. For instance, when it comes to your car, it's important to ensure your car is fully serviced and that you have an emergency kit ready in case any winter weather related accidents occur. You might consider going ahead and getting your car checked out, maybe your tires, um, batteries. Those are kinds of things that can sometimes fail during winter and specifically tires. A lot of times people don't think about that, but um, you want to make sure you have the best traction on the road during winter weather season. If you're interested in learning more about what supplies are best to keep in your car during the winter months, you can find that information on our website, WYMT.com. <laughs> Nice to see fellow WKU Hilltopper at Dustin Jordan from our colleagues up the National Weather Service in Jackson. Always good to see that. And they've been busy today, as have we, with uh, some severe weather we had earlier on today. The good news is we've cooled off and dried out big time behind that cold front. You see, we're even bringing a little sunshine to the party. I-75 in London, seeing a little bit of that sunshine there this afternoon as we finally cross into the early evening hours. Buffalo Mountain here, though, in Perry County. We are still seeing the cloud cover overhead. Notice that temperature at 43. It's rare I get to show the high temperature graphic at 4 o'clock because we were warm this morning. Mid 60s, upper 50s out there in many spots. We take you to now and we are much, much cooler. Mid 40s out there and low 40s in many spots thanks to the cold front that has brought much cooler winds out of the northwest with us 10 to 15 miles per hour this afternoon. That is what's helping bring in the much colder weather as we head into the evening hours. Still maybe a few showers from Pikeville onto Jenkins down toward Whitesburg and just to the east north of Norton, Virginia as well. But that's just about all that's left. Our big frontal boundary pushing off to the east. Those storms from earlier falling apart after a gusty round of showers this morning. Still want to keep that WYMT weather app handy, though, because we do have some cold weather on the way tonight. We're back down into the upper 20s for overnight lows on this Monday night. But don't worry, we've got even warmer weather on the way for later in the week. I'll have those details coming up in just a minute. Steve. Evan, thank you. As scientists continue to study the new Omicron variant, states and cities in the U.S. are taking bold action to slow the spread of the current dominant COVID-19 strain. CBS's Skylar Henry has the latest from Washington. 
taking aggressive action today. We are not going back to what happened in 2020. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is now expanding the city's vaccine mandate, requiring all private sector employees to get the shot. This is how we put health and safety first, by ensuring that there is a vaccine mandate that reaches everyone universally. The first in the nation mandate is set to take effect in just three weeks. It includes new guidelines requiring children between ages of 5 to 11 show proof of vaccination for indoor dining, fitness and entertainment venues. So long as they've gotten uh, that first dose by December 14th, they can continue to participate indoor dining, entertainment, all of these great things. Beginning today, the Biden administration is now requiring travelers coming to the U.S. to present a negative COVID test 24 hours before they land here, regardless of nationality or vaccination status. Now we're like, well, do we wait? Do we do our test today? Do we do it tomorrow? While the Delta strain of COVID-19 remains dominant, several mild cases of the Omicron variant have popped up in more than a dozen states. We really got to be careful before we make any determinations that it is less severe or it really doesn't cause any severe illness comparable to Delta. While scientists say there is still much to learn about Omicron, Early indications out of South Africa, where it was first identified, show being vaccinated and boosted are the best defense. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Experts believe COVID-19 cases will climb into the weeks leading into winter. A new study shows mixing and matching COVID-19 vaccines could increase immunity. Researchers studied 65 people who got two doses of the Pfizer vaccine and either a Pfizer booster or a Johnson & Johnson booster. Those with the J&J &J booster had a slow immune response, but antibodies continued to increase after four weeks. Meanwhile, participants who got the Pfizer booster had a strong and quick response, but the antibodies dropped off faster. The Omicron variant was not included in the testing and the results still need to be peer reviewed. A new study found U.S. adults saw higher blood pressure readings during the coronavirus pandemic. Researchers studied data of more than 464,000 people for three years from 2018 to 2020. They found the readings appeared to be significantly higher during the pandemic in April through December of 2020 compared with 2019. Several factors can contribute to this, including weight gain, alcohol consumption, and sleep. A new survey shows some of the people most vulnerable to severe flu illness are not protecting themselves. In fact, the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases found just 45% of adult patients with diabetes, heart disease, or lung disease say they have been vaccinated. Doctors like infectious disease specialist Dr. William Schaffner are concerned, noting during recent flu seasons, 9 out of 10 people hospitalized with flu had at least one underlying health condition and a mild flu season last year may make things worse. There was so little flu last year and vaccination didn't reach the usual levels. There's concern that many of us may have built up some susceptibility to flu, all the more important to get vaccinated. Though flu shot effectiveness varies each season, public health experts say it prevents millions of infections and can reduce the severity of illness if you do get sick. That's why they want everyone six months and older to get vaccinated. The survey also found patients are more likely to get vaccinated on the recommendation of a health care provider. There is a recall of more than 230,000 pounds of pork. Alexander and Horning announced the recall of 17 processed meat products, including a variety of spiral sliced ham, uncured ham, and ham steaks. The company says it is concerned the items may have been exposed to listeria. It says no one has reported being sick from the products and that there is no evidence the products were contaminated, but they just want to be cautious. The company has more details on the recall, including a list of the 17 products on their website. Let's head over to Wall Street now this Monday. They are kicking off the week on a high note as the Dow closes up today more than 646 points. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. But straight ahead here on First at Four, the Kennedy Center Honors are back in full swing after being put on hold last year due to the pandemic. We'll have a look at those being recognized. And it's a calmer forecast heading into the daytime tomorrow, but then things get interesting. I'll have the full breakdown on the way.